Hi guys! This is Fullerton Professional Organizing and my name is Carrie and today we're going to talk about organizing the pantry. Now this is my second time to do this video because I had forgotten that I had praise and worship music at full blast in the background and when I went to replay it you could hear that throughout the whole podcast. So I'm starting over, but um, let me tell you a little bit about my pantry. I do not personally have a pantry. Uh, in my home, um, I have a galley kitchen. It's What that means is it's long and um, when the refrigerator door opens, you can't get in or out of the kitchen. Um, because it's one straight path and it has lots of countertops, but that means the cabinets are up high and on the bottom. So there's no length, the, there's no pantry per se. So I have to make do with the counter space, uh, the cabinet space that I have. Um, so I have one cabinet next to the refrigerator where I keep all my canned goods uh, and food items like that. And then on the other side of the refrigerator is where I keep cereals. Well, we don't eat any cereals now that the kids are out of the house. So now um, I have um, chips in there which we shouldn't really be eating chips either but I have my chips and my protein drinks in that cabinet and then across from the refrigerator is where I keep all my baked goods because I have the countertop there that makes baking uh, easier but for a, a, someone that has a pantry um, I have some ideas for you but again, it'll also depend on the layout of your kitchen and where you do your baking and how you utilize your stove, oven, refrigerator, all of that, and microwave. Now, um, if your pantry just needs to be retidied, you can organize one shelf at a time and just kind of uh, figure out where you want things to be placed and do it that way. But most of the times when you've gotten to a place where you have no choice but to organize your pantry, the best option is to clean that pantry completely, take everything out because all the things that were lost in the back of the pantry, you'll need to know what those items are so that you uh, know what you have, know what's expired, and etc. So clean out the pantry, take everything out of the pantry, T try to categorize as you go, but if you can't, then go back afterwards, uh, put all baking stuff together and all canned goods together. Go ahead and wipe down and clean the shelves, and if you maintain um, oh, and purge anything that you do not eat that you purchased, but you just never did eat it, or it's been there for a year, or it's already expired, and go ahead and purge everything that you do not want to go back into that pantry. Now you're going to go, if you weren't able to categorize as you go, which I do try to categorize as I go, but there's always something that, you know, the countertop or the table filled up and you had to put something somewhere else. So now it's time to go back through and make sure everything's in categories and figure out um, what can type of bins and containers and baskets and storage you're going to use in your in your pantry. So now you're going to need to measure everything, measure your shelves so you'll know 
how many inches each basket will have to be. Um, that is where you'll have to use a lot of, uh, you'll have to use a lot of planning skills there because the bins that you can buy at the stores come in so many different sizes and shapes. Um, so just decide on the type of storage and containers you will, that will work for you and your family. What is popular may not work for you. What every, whatever you choose, make sure it also saves you space in the pantry. I try to stick to rectangles and squares because I don't want any wasted space. Um, now, you, some of you may like all the clear bins so you can see where everything is. Some may want to use baskets and bins that you cannot see through so that you don't see all the stuff. It depends on your personality. If you forget what you have, clear is probably better. If you know what you have, but want it all out of sight, then containers that you cannot see through are better. Now, for my baked goods, I prefer the square, rectangular, uh, clear containers for flour, sugar, uh, beans, pasta, all of that. So one, I can see it. Two, I like to be able to stack them and I pick containers that will hold the whole bag of flour, the whole bag of sugar. Uh, I don't want all of the extra stuff clogging up my pantry. But now for my father-in-law, because he did not know what he had, he had a lot of extra items, so I decanted what I could, put the items that were still in the flour and sugar bags in front of the canisters so that he used those first. And now that the pantry is organized, he knows how much rice, flour, stuff he has, and he won't have all that extra. But I will tell you, if you do have bulk items, we will get to that in a little bit later. So I do use the clear rectangular containers for baking goods like flour, sugar, etc., because it fits my cabinets well and they stack. I like to scoop to measure. Some people like to pour. So if you like to pour into the measuring cup, then you might want the taller, skinnier containers that pour. But I like to scoop. I think it's easier, faster. I don't have to think. I can use the right measuring uh, cup right into the container, scoop it, and that way. So, um, so if I decant anything that I do not remember how to cook, then I will cut out the instructions and tape it to the bottom or the back of the container. I use this, all the same methods, like I said before, for beans, pasta. Uh, now, my cereal and my chips, I do not decant those. I actually put those bags in baskets so that I cannot see what's in the baskets. <clears throat> because on the front of the basket it's going to say cereal and chips and we typically buy the same kind. So I always know what they they are. Now we don't buy uh, cereal anymore. That was for when the kids were, uh, we still had the kids. Then it was the uh, opened bags of cereal. Now we had chip clips on them so that they didn't get stale, but they ate cereal so quickly, we didn't have to worry about them getting stale. And that's another reason we didn't decant them. We also didn't decant them because they would get clogged up in the pore spouts. And it was just more of a hassle to decant the cereal. Now, if I had known what I know now, 
to use those rectangle containers and then just scoop the cereal. I would have bought those when we had kids and had cereal and I might have decanted. But I tried the cereal containers and it just did not work for us. But what I did find that took up lost, la, 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 excuse me, less space was putting the chip clip on the bags of cereal and stacking several bags of cereal in one basket. It took up so much less room and with the baskets, it wasn't messy. But now that's what we do for chips. But I don't have as many bags as chips. We really shouldn't eat chips at all. So the only chips that I have are tostada chips. We tend to not be able to live without those on occasion. So I have that chip clipped and in a basket. Um, and if we happen to have two kinds, uh, Fritos and tostadas, those will all be in that same basket. Now my husband does have some low carb items, but I keep those somewhere else. Like I said, I don't have a pantry, so I have a low carb snack cabinet. But those would be items that I would also put in the pantry in baskets so that we all knew what they were and where they are and they took up less space that way. Um, so I, would, I took the cereal bags out of the boxes. I do not like decanting these items, so I buy a square bin or basket, put them in. Uh, now we already talked about clear bins. Um, I love to, to talk about having an intentional mindset when it comes to our homes. And this can be especially key when it comes to your pantry makeover. You may love the look of glass storage containers with lids or pop open lids for things like pretzels, cereal, etc. Again, I think the rectangular ones that you can scoop work better if you have kids, or you might find large baskets to be an even better option to corral those bags and boxes like I mentioned that I did. Uh, the box uh, bags and boxes of food but be able to store them in the bags and boxes that they came in but whatever works for you now you've got to decide where items will go back into the pantry the you the items you use the least I would put on the very 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 top shelf the items you use Second least, I would put on the very, very bottom shelf. But of course, what works for you, works for you. It, it doesn't work, the same system doesn't work for every person. So, less used items, back stock, or sweet items that we tend to not want to uh, eat too many of. Uh, can go on the top shelf. The most used and convenient items should be in the middle shelves. Items used but not regularly can be at the bottom. If I had a pantry, I would put the baking goods at the top along with any items I want, but I would not be eating like sweets or carbs. In the middle would be my canned goods. Next shelf would be my protein drinks and sugar-free and low-carb options. And the bottom shelf would be the items like bins of onions and potatoes if I, you know, if I ate those vegetables, they would be at the bottom. If you like to see how I organized uh, my father-in-law's pantry, he is a widower. So I tried to make it as easy for him as possible. Um, I put the back stock items on the top shelf and then on the next shelf, I put his dry goods, his baking goods, his flour, sugar, pasta, and dried beans. Um, on the third and fourth shelf, I did put the canned goods towards the front and I put in the back his bigger jars of sauces 
and condiments like ketchup, salad dressings, because those are items that are not ready to be put in the refrigerator yet but yet they're taller than the canned goods and it takes up the back space of the pantry. And you can still grab it easily um, behind the canned goods. Um, the last shelf, his bottom shelf, before you get to the floor, has his Bisquick and his cereal. Now, I did put Crisco there because there wasn't room for it with the baked goods. Um, and that, that, that's something you have to work around, too. There may be an ideal way things should go in a pantry, but if your cabinets and your kitchen does not allow it to be done that way, then it isn't possible. Like for me, I don't have a pantry, so I had to put a shelf in my garage on that shelf, I have cleaning products, and I have, um, I buy my canned goods from Sam's Club. <clears throat> so I have all my extra canned goods there, and my bread machine, which I only use once a year. But that's because I don't have a pantry. Now on the, uh, uh, so he had his breadcrumbs and his baggies and foil uh, were on that shelf. Now on the floor, we put a trash, he, we put a little trash can so that we left his box of trash bags. We put a little trash can to hold all the little grocery bags that he wants to reuse um, and bulk cleaners like cleaning vinegar because he already had his cleaning items under his sink. So the bulk cleaning items like vinegar that stayed on the floor in his pantry. Now, if I would have thought about it, I would have bought another little trash can to stand the foil and the uh, cling wrap and uh, baggies. I would have stood that up in a trash can so that he'd have that shelf space uh, to sp a little more shelf space on that bottom shelf. So next time I see him, I will do that. Um, now, he also has these little baskets that are hung on his pantry door. So if you have doors on your pantry, hang organizers over them to free up shelf space. <coughs> now I have seen that space used for canned goods, spices, oils, and jars are usually good fits for these types of organizers. Pantry doors can hold all the little things. And these are some of the little things that we put on them for my father-in-law. All his cocoa packets, gravy packets, his oils, opened peanut butter, because you know, when you wanna make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you don't wanna have to go search through all the stuff to get the peanut butter. So that's right there on the door and his microwave popcorn. Those are all convenience items. I think he also had some, some pudding um, boxes there. Now, the next tip is to label everything. Um, mostly so you'll remember what is in the containers and where they go, but so other people can put things back where they go. Uh, the, so label the containers, but also label the spots on the shelf that the items belong as well. So they, everyone knows where to find the items and where to put them back. And that goes a long ways for maintenance. Um, you can maintain your pantry a little better if you know where to put things back. Your pantry can get disorganized after a while, but to help maintain your space, always put items back in their appropriate spot and get the whole family on board by keeping food accessible and visible. Schedule a quick cleaning twice a month to make sure that everything is up to date and in place so you don't have to spend hours and hours organizing again. You shouldn't have to take every single item out of the pantry again. You should just be able to reset it 
maybe move things around if it didn't work perfectly, but don't overbuy, therefore don't overstuff the pantry. All right, now if you are watching this podcast or if you are catching my podcast on YouTube, I will have some video of how I organized my father-in-law's before and after pantry, and you can see that. But I pretty much described it for you um, in this podcast of how I organized it for him. Um, and it's working. We will see the next time we go visit what worked and what didn't work for him and how many more labels I need to add and how many bins and baskets I possibly need. I didn't really put any bins and baskets for him because he needed to be able to see where everything was in the pantry and he has a pantry door so it does close and it does look nice and neat. Um, and hopefully he will, he will keep it pretty orderly. If he doesn't, I'll just reorganize it for him the next time we go visit. Um, so thank you for watching. Please give me recommendations, share with anybody that you think would be interested. Give me thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. It really does help me out. Um, and I will love to see you on the next podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I will see you next time. Here is the pantry before. to get it organized and it's going to be a lot easier to get to all the things that need to be reached. All right, there was a lot of extra stuff. So I put all the extra baking stuff that is up there. We've got pasta, sugar, rice, and pinto beans, and there is a lot of it. So uh, I did put them in containers, but I figured they'd use up what is not in containers first and then just keep, they won't, over purchase with the uh, containers after that. Then we've got our canned goods and the extra canned goods and condiments in the back, less used. And potatoes, green beans, peas and corn. And then this is the miscellaneous items. I tried to keep all like items together and the less used and unopened in the back. And here is the breakfast tea stuff and the other and uh, baggies. As you can tell, I don't have these in uh, containers. Um, this is, this is, uh, we used, what we had on hand instead of buying extra containers. I did buy the ones for the canned goods, but, uh, and then at the very bottom, we're just gonna have the trash bags. This, he likes to keep his bags in, uh, so I bought this trash can for the bags and then his cleaning products down at the bottom. And then on the door, we have some empty space and just all the little stuff. I have all the gravies, all the hot cocoa and popcorn, his powdered milk and baking sweets, some other little tiny items here, and then oils and opened peanut butter there. So here is how we organized 
this gentleman's pantry and I hope you like it. Here is the pantry before. And then we're going to get it organized. And it's going to be a lot easier to get to all the things that need to be reached. All right. There was a lot of extra stuff. So I put all the extra baking stuff that is up there. We've got pasta, sugar, rice, and pinto beans. And there is a lot of it. So uh, I did put them in containers, but I figured they'd use up what is not in containers first and then just keep, they won't over purchase with the uh, containers after that. Then we've got our canned goods and the extra canned goods and condiments in the back, less used. And potatoes, green beans, peas and corn. And then this is the miscellaneous items. I tried to keep all like items together and the less used and unopened in the back. And here is the breakfast tea stuff and the other and uh, baggies. As you can tell, I don't have these in uh, containers. Um, this is, this is, uh, we used what we had on hand instead of buying extra containers. I did buy the ones for the canned goods, but, uh, and then at the very bottom, we're just gonna have the trash bags. This, he likes to keep his bags in, uh, so I bought this trash can for the bags and then his cleaning products down at the bottom. And then on the door, we have some empty space and just all the little stuff. I have all the gravies, all the hot cocoa and popcorn, his powdered milk and baking sweets, some other little tiny items here, and then oils and opened peanut butter there. So here is how we organized this gentleman's pantry. And I hope you like it.